Hello friends, welcome. Uh, just here today, I've uh, got a new camera here. Um, my old one's more or less the same model, but the older one, so this one's got a few new adaptions to it. So this is my second camera, so I'll be using a second camera view at times just to talk to you. And we'll come back to the main camera. Uh, what I wanted to talk about today is um, I've made a couple of blogs on my website about my childhood and shepherding, and then I've done one about my vision of a beautiful oriental woman who happened to be Su Ling, uh, my spirit guide, uh, didn't know it at the time. Uh, and then, uh, you know, about my calling of my spirit and, you know, becoming um, aware that I was a spiritual being through dancing and having an amazing, most amazing spiritual experience where all my chakras opened up on the dance floor and it was this beautiful energy flowing around the whole of me and it went up through my body and down through my body until I was fully like uh, every chakra in my body was open and I literally started levitating across the dance floor. My feet were just very lightly tapping the dance floor and my spirit took control and it was a wonderful experience, you know, and I knew that, you know, after that experience I was a spirit for sure and that if I could find that much there must be more to find, which I did, you know. Uh, quite shortly afterwards actually because I had a friend that helped me a great deal uh, so you know and I knew there's probably a god after that for sure and you know that there must be some sort of afterlife so it was a big revelation to me um, but but back in 1992 I had a v vision of a beautiful oriental woman in my bedroom and I'm just going to quickly talk talk about that although I've talked about that in my last blog uh, you know I didn't know who it was, and but uh, it was my weekend off, and I was sleeping, and and to some it disturbed me as though there was something in the room, and I woke up, opened my eyes, and uh, you know it was uh, a beautiful. Well, I couldn't see it was a beautiful. It was an Oriental woman, I guessed. Uh, very long hair, really full long black hair, and it went down to her knees, and she was walking away from me down the side of my left hand side of my bed. And my eyes just forced shut, <laughs> and I went back to sleep for a couple of seconds. And you wouldn't do, would you? But it was all part of a spiritual vision that was meant to be, so they were helped to be closed again. And uh, suddenly I opened my eyes again, and she was turned round, holding a naked, but holding a kimono up in, or a dress up in front of her, a black dress with white flowers embroidered on it. And, you know, I was just looking at her face, and she was stunningly beautiful. And she wasn't looking at me. She was like she was looking straight forward. But all of a sudden, this look of shock went across her eyes because she could see I was looking at her. And it was as though I wasn't meant to know she was there sort of thing. Uh, so uh, then my eyes were forced shut again. And uh, then they opened again, and she was kneeled down, almost trying to hide from me at the bottom of my bed. And we just gazed into each other's eyes. And it was beautiful. You know, you, you know, you can look into the soul of a person through their eyes when they're open to you. And I did, you know, and I could see the most loving person looking back at me, a, a soulmate, for sure. Uh, then my eyes were forced close again, opened again, and she was gone. You know, I just sort of wanted her to come back and wondered how she got in my house because the doors were all locked. It was that real. She was that solid looking. Uh, and then, you know, I just laid back thinking about it and thoughts started to come into my mind as though she had come to me every single night after I'd gone to sleep, snuggled up behind me, and I had a vision in my mind, an image in my mind of her snuggled up behind me, cuddling me, loving me to bits. Uh, and then, you know, um, that the thoughts went on to as though I wasn't meant to know about her and that she would left every morning before I woke up, only I'd just caught her out this time. <laughs> so obviously the most loving soul to me. I didn't know what to make of it. I didn't know nothing about spiritual things, didn't know nothing about clairvoyance and psychic, any of this stuff. So, you know, I didn't know what to make of that. And that was two months after I split up with my wife in 1992, in the midsummer of 92. And it was a precursor for what was going to happen later. So uh, I found out who she was later. So so then I went on and had a major calling. Uh, I decided to be a better person than I already was and start making improvements in my life in the autumn of 94. And I had a major calling to find something. And in the end, in March of uh, 95, I found you know, that through that dancing experience that I was a spiritual being. And, uh, you know, it went on from there. So, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I had a friend that I'd 
started working at Guildford Borough Council grouse maintenance in uh, the January of '94, and uh, somebody there, Peter, a lovely man, and so worldly wise, it was amazing to listen to him. So many people went to him for advice because he could give really good impartial advice, and. Uh, you know, he befriended me and, you know, he was such a conscientious man, you know, and I was very fussy about my friends, but I could see, you know, he was a person I wanted to be a friend with. So we become quite good friends. He told me later on that he knew who I was, you know, as soon as the first day he saw me, but I didn't know I had a destiny, a predestined life plan, in fact, uh, as a few do. And, you know, he... I, uh, uh, I then had my experience, and a month later I said to him, you know, about the middle of April of 95, I was really struggling to afford my rent in the double uh, rented room. And he said, oh, you could come rent a room in my house. I've had, you know, lodgers before. And, you know, I said, how much? He said, just a donation, and we agreed a small amount. So, so you know, it made it very sensible for me to move in there. And... Uh, when I was there, I'd never had the slightest clue that he was a very spiritual man and had a lot of spiritual abilities. All the time I'd known him for a, a year and a quarter, I'd known him, had no clue whatsoever he had any spiritual inclination whatsoever. After I'd been there a week, he he told me that he was a medium and a healer, a clairvoyant, psychic, and all sorts of things, uh, and that, you know, he... he brought me a message from my mother that passed over from when I was 10. So he was the first person to bring me a message. I've had many since through many different mediums from my mother. We're very evidential proof of what we did together when she was here on the earth plane, memories that we shared and things we did together. Uh, you know, so, you know, evidential proof proves it to you without a doubt. Also, my grandfather and others have come to me that have given me lots of evidence of things we did while he, he was here and the others. Uh, so it was a wonderful experience, you know, and uh, I was very inspired and had a lovely message from my mother. Uh, Peter later on took me to the spiritualist church and he said, here you will find those of like mind, you know, those pursuing those sort of things that if you had an interest in that side of it, you know, you could learn a lot from. And uh, he took me there and I got another message from my mother and my grandfather. So it was beautiful and we went back there once, one more time a couple of weeks later and got another message. <laughs> so I was very fortunate and, you know, it was a big welcoming. And, you know, it's lovely to know they're alive on the other side, isn't it? You know, if you want to believe those messages, if you're sceptical of them, don't want to believe it, that's fair enough. So while I was with Peter, you know, he was very evolved and uh, very in touch with the spirit realm. And he told me, you know, that our coming together wasn't our accident, that, you know, it was predestined that he helped teach me some these things. And, you know, he said to me how mediumship worked and taught me a great deal about all these spiritual gifts while I was there. I only stayed there for about three months. And then I moved back down this end of the country, which it was only an hour away, but I wanted to move back down this way. But anyway, you know, he said, you know, you've had past lives and you've had five past lives and you've been black he didn't know all about all my past lives, but he said, I've been black, I've been Mark, uh, one of many disciples of Christ while he was here. He had hundreds of disciples, so I was Mark, a disciple of him. I'd also been a soldier in a past life. I've since found out, you know, about Su Ling and that my past life to this life, my last life, before this life was Japanese and uh, samurai, I believe. So he was... Uh, because I've had a Japanese master come to me uh, through another medium, say, uh, this is coming out of you, you know, a Japanese with a kendo stick, with a wooden kendo stick master. So, uh, you know, that's obvious to me, because Je- Su Ling, although her name's Chinese, she is ha- uh, was Japanese in her last life, because she's had four lives upon this world herself also. So so that was great. And, you know, so become evident, you know, I thought maybe it had been Japanese, and that's how I'd met Su Ling. Thing. And, you know, that gave me the proof that that was one of my last uh, past lives. So um, I didn't know about Su Ling. He just told me about my past lives. And then I had a bit of a problem with some spirit. And Su Ling come and intervened to some extent. It didn't ultimately cure the problem. But she stuck up for me and come and defended me. Uh, and 
Peter then said, you know, I thought what a good person which she was and how much she must care about me to do that for me. And it was then that Peter told me that Sue Ling is your past life wife. And, <laughs> you know, uh, I was in a relationship that had just finished a, a few weeks before this, three or four weeks before this, because I wanted to find my soulmate. And there's she coming to me with all this love. And I remembered the vision and everything about her, how much she loved me and all these things shortly afterwards. And, you know, I fell in love with her. And it was easy to do, fall in love with her. She was such a beautiful person. And Peter regularly brought me messages from her. But she said, you know, get on with your life down here, carry on having relationships, live a practical life and all these things to me. Don't have to do anything special for me. So, so, but then Peter told me about Sue Ling and that she, she was a very highly evolved from being from plane 10. And that's where I'd returned from too, from my past life to this new life. Because each new life, we have a new spirit and soul to live. <laughs> and that adds to the collective when you get reawoken when you're ready to back in the spirit realm. So the past life's really dormant inside you. But Sue Ling's totally devoted to me too as part of that whole life, you know, group soul. And it's beautiful. And uh, Peter told me all of her names, which I got short-term memory loss, but she's got quite a few Oriental-sounding sa names. And he told me that she'd had four past lives, and I've since found out she's been Chinese and then in her last life, she was Japanese. Uh, I don't know, don't remember her Japanese name. She calls herself by Su Ling, which is a Chinese name. So she's the most beautiful soul. And she's come to me so many times through mediums. And she go, gave me a beautiful golden rose of her love for me and through a medium and how much she loves me. So she loves this new life as much as she loves the old because it's all part of the same life, isn't it? Uh, so it was a beautiful, beautiful experience finding out about Su Ling and having this most inspiring and wondrous awakening. But, you know, soon things went wrong for me after I'd moved back down this way. I got three spirits that come along and they started blocking me because I had all these abilities to communicate with spirit. I was talking clearly to them in my mind and, you know, having uh, psychic abilities and all these things and it all shut down because i got free spirit that come and really blocked me seriously and attacked me quite regularly and they're still there today you know but i'm evolving beyond there slowly bit by bit i'm evolving beyond their clutches because they're in the darker vibration and although I suffered a lot and they attacked me a lot and I had many, many mental illnesses because of what they did to me and suffered greatly, depression and all kinds of things. And, you know, but it was a learning curve because sometimes you suffer something in life and it teaches you something great about helping other people. And many of the very best healers in this world have suffered greatly because they've got so much more understanding of what others are suffering and so much more understanding of how to help that person, which has helped me greatly. So although, you know, you want to get rid of these negative spirits, they still have brought a lesson to me and a good value. But I, I started seriously meditating again to connect with Sue Ling, because I couldn't hear any of them anymore. And I was very in touch, you know, very clairvoyantly awakened because it happened overnight with me. Some people, you have to spend a long time developing these gifts, but with me, it just went boink. <laughs> I was fully, you know, maybe it was too much. But uh, so sort of spiritual congestion with what they're doing, blocking. Uh, but I, you know, went to development classes, all sorts, couldn't get nowhere in the early days. But since 2010, I've been laying down meditating with Su Ling, slowly, 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 inch by inch, these abilities are opening up again. And, you know, I'm not doing mediumship at the moment because I don't feel I'm unblocked enough. But my healing abilities, they've never been affected by these spirits. So I can heal very powerfully still. But it's the clairvoyant side of things and the psychic side of things that they're really able to block. But I'm making progress day by day. And, you know, uh, I got more and more and more in touch with Su Ling. And she's the only spirit that get, 
gets around me because she's very evolved and very powerful that I can actually hear at the moment. But others are there and I can, you know, sense them and these awarenesses are growing inside me once again. So you go down that big dark hole and then you come back up into the light because when you get to rock bottom, there's only one way left to go and that's back up. And, you know, I'm totally devoted to doing that. So I'm hoping in the next year or two, all these things will be uh, no problem anymore. And I know for a fact that the spirit realm is working very very hard to find much greater protections for us because one of the things that i've become aware of since and with peter is that peter told me there's going to be a a spiritual intervention on this world because we're doing so much damage to it through pollution and wars and different things that it's been decided by god and the spirit realm to help this world and to intervene and help inspire us to get on a better track and take this world into a safer, you know, healthier environment for us all. So a spiritual awakening is due, apparently, and that could be in the next few years. And, you know, I feel that, you know, I hope to contribute to that a little bit myself as well. So the thing is that uh, I also wanted to talk about was uh, <coughs> was my past life experiences, and they were most beautiful so I found a most loving past life wife who I married down here. She put the ring back on her finger through a medium at the church. I said to her, if you want to marry my life too through the connection to past life, you're most welcome to and I love you to bits and we are soulmates. And one day she came along and said, I can see, you know, Sue Ling's put the ring on because I asked her if she would marry me and so she's put the ring on for me so it was a beautiful that was uh, 2017 I think 16 I can't remember now <laughs> but while I was going through my awakening and all these abilities opened up to me I had four past life experiences in 95 when I was going through my awakening in in the end of April May June and July I was becoming awoken to all these abilities and I had, I had three, uh, two past life experiences then and two the next year. And the first one I had of my past life awakening in a, in a small amount within me is that I'm dyslexic. You know, I, I don't spell very well. I find, you know, spelling very difficult, reading quite difficult, maths just the same. You know, I've never been any good at maths. But I went into a garage and the woman picked up four items I asked for off the shelf, and I saw the price of each of them. And then when she picked the last item up, I instantly knew what it was going to come to. And there's no way I could ever add those items up. And she flashed them over the till and, I, and told me what the price was. And I went, oh, <laughs> like that, because it was exactly what I knew it was going to be in my mind. So that was a past life uh, experience, a mild one, but it was. And then... Uh, I was frightened, you know, because I am a very uh, believe in equality and all these different things. And I'm thinking, what if my past life, you know, how is he with Su Ling? Because, you know, I believe in equality and, and all these things. And, um, oh, no, that was the, the second one. Uh, the next one, rather, was uh, I was a bit afraid because I know when you go back into the spirit realm, you can be a reawoken to your past life. And I thought, well, I'll disappear. Surely I'll disappear. So it was given to me, I believe, by God, that I experienced my past life awoke awakening, all his confidence and all his energy. So it was like six spirit energies. Really, you felt like you'd have to do a 24-mile marathon just to be tired enough to go to sleep. You're so full of energy. So I had all my energies joined together in an an awakening of my past life, all his confidence and that. And, you know, I was so happy and I didn't want him to go away again, but it only lasted about 30, 40 seconds. So it was just to put my fears at, at bay because all it's really like is that when you get awoken in the past life, you remember the rest of your lives. And it's as one being, you become one new being when you get awoken. So it was just amazing experience and it put all my fears to rest because it's like this it's like somebody hits you on the head one day and you look you have past life amnesia in spirit so it's like you've got amnesia to your past life so somebody bangs you on the head and you lose most of your memory you don't recognize things or know things you used to know if it comes back to you you'd be very glad of that wouldn't you you'd be happy to remember again and that's the same being awoken to a past life it's a very happy experience and it's all game 
it's all gain. So you gain in a lot of intelligence, a lot of memories of all your past, a lot of extra energy because each new time, each time you come here, you have a new spirit which makes you more powerful, more powerful, more powerful. The more lives you have to a level about eight or nine uh, times, if you come back after that, it doesn't really have much effect. So, so it's an amazing experience. And then the following year, uh, I had another experience of the confidence and energy of my past life. All six of my life forces joined together, and you know, you feel super hu human just about. And uh, later on that year, that's when I had this, what I was talking about just now, in the autumn of 96, I was frightened that my past life being so uh, old and back in the past wouldn't treat Su Ling as her equal. Because men didn't in the past, did they? They thought they were better than women, and I was a bit worried about that. And um, because I wanted to always treat her in complete equality. So I was given a past life experience. My past life totally woke up inside me in the background, and all I could feel was all this love welling out my heart, true love for Su Ling as much as I loved her, of my past life. So it wasn't mine, and how much he loved her. And in my mind, I heard, his voice in my mind going, I love Su Ling, I love Su Ling, I love Su Ling, and all this love welling out of me for her. And I was so touched by it, I said, you take the four. <laughs> and he came to the front of me, and he talked to his past life spirit, his wife, Su Ling, in the spirit realm, my past life spirit wife. In the spirit realm, he spoke to her because she was in my presence at that time as a spirit orb. So he spoke to her and told her how much he loved her. And this is after, uh, well, I was um, about 34 then, so 33. He, he spoke to her after being asleep inside me for 33 years and, you know, told her how much he loved her, what a hard time I was going through because this is when I had the, the attacks happening and the depression and different things the spirit were doing. And, you know, uh, then he turned... To, to those spirit and spoke to them and told them that they should go away and give up, basically, but they didn't. And then he turned to me and he said, what a great asset I was to our life, our life. So, so it was a beautiful and very touching experience. And then slowly he went back to sleep again, and I just didn't want him to go away again. I was so, uh, such an amazing experience. You know, you can't wait to get awoken, and, you know, you can go into the spirit realm. You don't have to be awoken, and Father God will carefully pick lives down here that would be happy to be awoken to their past lives. You know, he won't pick anybody that didn't want to be awoken to a past life. So you're free to stay in the spirit realm as long as you wish without being awoken. But eventually you can go before God it is in the hall of learning and ask to be awoken to your past life. And that is the most wondrous and beautiful experience you could ever have. And Peter, he'd had a past life as well. So, and he was also quite awoken to it. So it was amazing. So I had the most amazing time. And, you know, uh, although you get the negative side of things that, you know, there are bad spirit out there too. You've got to be wary of them and protect against them. That you see the good side of it too. And there's so many good things through finding your own spiritual existence and beliefs and progressing yourself because we our spirits having a physical experience, you know, and this is just the first plane of spiritual evolution. And there are many more planes, so there's 12 planes in all, but man's only made it to plane 10. I say that's where Su Ling lives on plane 10, and that's where I come from, from my past life as plane 10. So when you get reawoken, you just become one complete entire new being, all lives as one new person, not six different lives taking turns. You just become an evolution of all all six lives. So, yeah, it's something I very much look forward to. Can't wait. And you get a lot more intelligent and a lot more energy and a lot more abilities than what you'd normally have. And I believe the past life experience I've had will come back again. And that I will be able to tune into my past life. And he was called Mark in the spirit realm. That's the name he chose. And, you know, I believe I will be able to have a partial awakening because Peter, he could be awoken to his past life when he wanted to. And it, the difference between Peter as he was and when he was awoken to his past life and channeling or 
becoming his past life was quite amazing. The levels of intelligence, the wisdom, the spiritual understanding, the abilities, different things. And, you know, he was an amazing person and he set me on the right track. Uh, he was uh, the best friend I've ever had. And he was so psychic. He could say, so and so's coming around to see you, or the phone's just about to ring and it's for you. And it was every time he was right. So there are other psychics who can do some of these things as well, but he was very evolved. So yeah, I'm going back to that place where he was, hopefully. So yeah, it's good. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's going on the blog on my website. It's all going so going to be released on YouTube shortly after that. I'll be doing a new blog this week, hopefully, and you know, put this on later on this week. Testing the two cameras out just to see. Hello, <laughs> just to see what they compare like together, and you know what it's like. So it'd be quite nice going outside later on, maybe in a year or two, and having two cameras out there. Uh, mostly, I'll be just using this new one for the time being. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. You can see how happy I am being uh, aware of spirit. You can see how happy I am on this destined pathway of developing spiritually, how much I truly love helping you all, as many people as I can go out there and help through inspiration, happiness, healing, whatever form it is that helps you. That's the way I want to help you. And whether it's just my voice calming you, or you find something interesting I say, or my experiences, whatever it is I do to, to help, help your life or make it a bit happier. I'm so happy to do for you, you know, because I really love and care for my fellow mankind here on this world and beyond and would always try to help people, you know, through my videos and different things I do. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please look at the links below because my website, my magazine, MP3 downloads, other Facebook links and other links are down there. Uh, also, you know, please like my videos if you like them. You know, and please share them if you can, the ones that you think will help your friends or they might be interested in because that gets me more subscribers. So love and light to you. Bless you. Neil.